Hello, everybody. So this is uh, part three of the video lectures on modeling trace elements, and I wanted to end with graphing. So with the graph, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of things here. So first, these elements, they're listed in this order, uh, rubidium, thorium, uranium. Um, these are not in order of abundance or in order of atomic number. I, I want the elements equally spaced. So I've just repeated the elements here. So let me just put those in red. This is what we're going to plot. And we're going to just number them 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So I just entered a 1 here and they go out to 18. So we have 18 different elements. So if we plot the sample concentrations, which I've just repeated down here. So this is the sample. I've just uh, made a copy of it. So I, I've used the command to select this first column in gray, the number in which I want these elements ordered, and then the concentrations. Now this 150 is the same as that 150. 19.4 is the same as this one. I, I'm repeating it down here because in Excel, just as the left hand column always is the x-axis, if you're picking rows, the top row is usually the x-axis. So this will be x and this will be y. So I've selected both of those and I'm going to insert a chart. Now this is a chart that is going to look a little bit messy. Um, so to show you what's going on here, first, let, this is, we're going to change the uh, vertical axis, which is concentration, to a logarithmic value. Um, and then we will put in, well, I'm going to select the data, and we're going to give a line. See, so you see how it goes up and down? So this is the, uh, if if we look at the elements here, there's no zero element. So the element number one is rubidium, element number two is thorium, element number three is uranium, there's barium, etc. What you'll eventually do is insert text and replace those numbers. Uh, we want the x-axis at the bottom. So what we would do is click on the axis and click on the horizontal axis. And we'd want the axis value to intersect. Oh, I'm not seeing it. Uh, we'll come back to that later. Oh, yeah, there it was. Um, axis crosses. At 0 0.01. Didn't like that. Well, anyway, uh, you can use the value that the axis crosses at to uh, drop this down so it's the bottom. We'll give it one more try and see if it's going to work, see if Excel will do what we ask us to do. Um, I think I selected the wrong axis. I selected the horizontal instead of the vertical. Anyway, uh, this vertical value Let's make it look a little bit nicer. We'll put some axes on so you can see what we're looking at. So axis titles, primary vertical. This is concentration. Make this look a little bit better. Uh, this is the, we don't, I don't even know if we really need a title here. Um, we'll call it element type, but you can actually just skip this because what you'd really want to do is insert text and simply, uh, instead of having a zero, you would write rubidium. And instead of, ha there, there should be a one here, and instead of the one, you would have thorium, etc. I'm going to fix the should have been at zero okay so this is now this is actually the problem we were talking about in an early earlier lecture this up and down is related to the auto Harkins rule most of these elements that are up high 
have an even number of protons and or neutrons, and these guys down here have an odd number. So that's the Otto Harkins rule. What we want to do is we want to look not at early solar system formation from uh, uh, ne uh, nucleosynthetic processes, but what we want to do is look at fractionation. And so instead of plotting this, what I want to do is what we want to do is instead plot the normalized values. So I plotted the sample concentration here in blue. What we're going to do is we're going to skip that. Instead, we're going to look at the normalized values. So in this, this cell here, what I've just simply done is I've taken the ratio of the sample divided by more. So this is a more normalized value. So I'm going to copy all of those and I'll paste it into the chart. And notice that we get a much smoother trend. So I'm going to delete this old chart. This is the one that we're actually interested in. This is the one that's allowing us to see how the elements in the continental crust are enriched or depleted compared to uh, mid-ocean ridge basalt. Let's make the values a little bit easier to see. Right. So everything greater than one is enriched. So here we're seeing that the Tuolumne intrusive complex granites uh, are enriched in elements that are greater than element, uh, less than element nine. So element nine was niobium. So all of these elements, strontium, cerium, lanthanum, potassium oxide, etc., those all have ratios greater than one, which means that the concentration in the Tuolumne is higher than it is in mid-ocean ridge basalt. Everything less than one is depleted. So this more normalized uh, set of ratios is, it's, is much more interesting. Now you can also use chondrite normalization. That's a little bit more common. More normalization is a little more rare, but I think it's a little more useful. So that's what we're gonna do. So the second thing we were asking is, do any of our predicted values, or these are our predicted uh, liquid concentrations here based on fractional crystallization, would any of those match what we see here? Now to plot those, I'm going to have to again insert a row and I'm going to have to number these. So we want rubidium in the first slot, thorium is the second element, and then we'll fill right to move all the way across. So we said that this guy here looked pretty promising. So I'm going to select these and then I'll use the command feature to select the values at 6.26. So copy, come back down here, edit, paste special, categories, X values, and first row. Ah, we have this Otto Harkins rule. So we've hit this problem again. Well, we don't, if we're comparing more normalized here in the orange, then these should also be more normalized. So what we're gonna to have to do is move this chart out of the way and create a new set of values where we take the calculated liquid and divide it by the mid-ocean ridge values. Now when I take that ratio, this, these are the same values of F. So I'm gonna copy that. So here is F equals 1 to 0.001. Make the font a little bit larger so it's easier to see. And this is simply the calculated value divided by the morb. When I fill down, I don't want to change the morb row. So I'll put a dollar in front of that. And then I should be able to fill down and fill across. Right. And so let's just check an arbitrary calculation here. This is our calculated value for cerium at 70% liquid, 70% liquid divided by cerium. So our fill down, fill right works. So we're not going to work with these calculated liquids. We're going to instead work with our more normalized liquids. So we're gonna get rid of this guy here. We don't really want this one plotted. What we really wanna plot is this row 
No, let me move the chart out of the way. Divided by this 62% liquid calculation. So we'll copy that, edit, paste special, and we'll post that into the diagram. Now we get a much nicer um, match, which kind of makes sense, right? Because now we're, we're comparing apples to apples instead of apples to oranges. So the next question is, can we make this look any better by changing some of our model values over here? Now, what I eventually want you to do is to create a new sheet and have a chart sheet. Um, so in this model, the way it's calculated, notice that uh, I'm using the, the case where Plagioclase is 55%. So what happens if I make it 60% and I decrease sampleable to zero? Remember, the sum always has to equal one. Did it get any better or worse? Let's make it 70%. And this is um, zero. Uh, it changes these values a little bit. These don't change much at all. Um, maybe it looks like we need lower amounts of plage clays and maybe higher amounts. Put in a little bit of volume just for fun. Um, anyway, you could play with this and try to get it as, to match as closely as you can. I don't think this is a very good fit. And so what I would do is look at other bulk uh, starting liquid compositions. So remember, so this is uh, painted orange here with 102 rubidium, 102 ppm rubidium. And what we could do is look for something that has uh, maybe a little bit different amounts of rubidium. Let's say this, this guy uh, is 59% silica. Maybe there's a more primitive liquid. Let's see if there's something with a lower silica content. That has 58. Um, let's take this guy with 58 weight percent. And by the way, I said you had to be careful about reordering it. Uh, I've already done that to make it a little bit easier for you. So I'm going to copy this. So this will be a new starting liquid. Maybe we have the wrong starting liquid composition. Maybe the minerals are fine. Uh, it looks like we get about the same answer. So anyway, I want you to play with this, and I want you to come up with as good a model as you can uh, for calculating the uh, evolved liquids with the using the primitive liquids as um, an input. Uh, and I think we're going to use one last video where I explain what is going to be a plausible uh, starting liquid composition and what is a plausible uh, granitic composition for you to model. So one more video after this.